uh, yeah, it's part two now. I'm in me to me project, me, uh, me Steam Loco. Um, if you've not seen part one, I suggest you see that. Then you'll get you'll get all uh, the gist of what I'm doing with with this on the budget build. Uh, so what I've done here, I, I've, I've I've cut this plate down to four and one eighth wide, as you've seen in part one. And then what I've done, my milling machine has only got as it's got a a 22 inch table but it's only got 11 inch traverse from end to end so what I'm doing I'm going to do this these main frames in three chunks and how I'm doing it I've set this this piece of uh, extruded aluminium angle which is is uh, is accurate and and not bent or what can I say Anyway, it, it, it's a true piece of aluminium that, and I've set that up in my milling machine and clamped it to the table with two bolts and set it up with the uh, dial test indicator and it's within a thou now true to the to my spindle. And what I'm doing, I'm setting me, me, um, me plate that I've cut to, to nearly, nearly to size and I'm starting to take a skim off on this this edge that I've cut with Axor and I'm leaving a little bit on ready for when I turn it over to mill this this edge that's not quite square because it's hot roll steel this it's not bright mild steel so I shall be turning it over and doing that edge and squaring that up and uh, this is the setup I'm using I'm going to cut 11 inch um, that portion and then I'm going to move it over 11 inch and cut that portion and so on till I've done it all and to make sure you get this 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 plate what you're cutting up to the edge of this aluminium uh, angle I'm using my feeler gauge just to make sure that I've got no gap on them two plates uh, I can't get a two thou feeler in there so I know it's flush up to that edge and I know that edge is square because I've, I've clocked it up uh, and what I'm doing now I've I've took, took a roughing cut I've just got to take a finishing cut now up this edge then I shall move it on pick up this um, this bit that I've machined and then machine next part down to that pretty straightforward really but maybe not if you're a beginner and then what I'm doing uh, using my, my vernier gauge just to double check that everything is coming out square and I'm, I'm within a thou and a half there well that was my roughing cut so I'm just going to take a, a finishing cut up that part then that part's finished and I've left 40 thou on to machine the other side then and I'm doing both plates together uh, I've clamped them onto parallels and uh, that's given me enough space then to machine it so I'll just machine I'll just take this finishing cut now So I'll go back to the beginning now, ready to take me next, so table's ready to take me next slide. Yeah, so all I've got to do now is take my clamps off, slide it along, clean everything down, make sure that that edge is flush up to that angle, and then I'm set then, ready for my next portion. Right, so I've just cleaned my machine down, uh, hoovered all the swarf up, and uh, I've, I've moved it over. And now I'm just clamping it down and uh, I've moved it over 11 inches to get to the beginning of my travel again. And as you're clamping it down, make sure you clamp it over your, your, your parallels that you've put in. You don't want to go and, you don't want to go and bend, bend the plate. And then with a feeler gauge, just to double check that you flush up, just make sure your feeler gauge don't go in like that. So now you know that everything's 
stayed square and you've moved it and everything's in line again. Uh, when you've only got a small milling machine and small equipment, you've just got to try and make do best you can, really. Um, it's not an ideal situation, but for any of you beginners, I'm, I'm just going to take a couple of roughing cuts to, to take the majority of the material off. I'm not going to take very deep cuts and leave a little bit on just to touch onto that face that I've already machined and take a finishing cut. And the other thing just to watch out, like I said, make sure you're clamping over your parallels and make sure you've built it up enough so that your handles are, on your machine are, are going to clear. Right, I shan't bore you with all that machining because it's it's pretty straightforward from now on. Um, and what I'm going to do, uh, what I shall, what I shall be doing, I shall I shall do my main my main frames for my side frames, and then I'm going to move on to my buffer plates, uh, and do the same with them, cut them down and machine them up. And when I've got all my mach my material machined. So that it's all square and to size, I shall then mark all the holes out and uh, I'll reset it up as it is on here on, on my milling machine to cut them to cut my slots out for my three horn my three horn uh, plates to fit. So other than getting it laser cut, this is the, this is the long method of doing it. And it'll save you a lot of money in the long run. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll sign off for now because I'm all I'm doing is just repeating what I've told you now. Uh, we all we all rest it material. Uh, I'll do another video when I've probably ready for cutting slots in into for own guides. Yeah. So I'll sign off for now then, thanks for watching.